So when we're looking at PowerShell objects, remember we have way more properties than show up in our regular output. So remember we, if we do the get process, we filter more, you'll see we get eight properties. If I pipe that to get member, we're going to discover that we have about 67 or so different properties. All right, what if I want to see properties other than the default? What if I want to change my output? Well, I do that by using the select object commandlet. So let me do this. I'm going to do a get process. I'm going to filter that to or pipe that to more. All right, let's say I don't want all of this data. Let's say I want the process name and the CPU, and that's it. All right, so what I would do is I'd do get process, and I'd pipe that to select object. And what select object does, now it's easy for us to get this confused here. Select object doesn't pick different objects. It picks properties of objects. So I want to do CPU, and then I want to do process name. Go ahead and it's going to look the way I type it here. So I want to do pro a CPU process name and I'm going to pipe that to more. So that's going to give me just my CPU and my process name. Now I want you to see something here. Take a careful look at the CPU here. Notice what it looks like. When I do the regular get process, pipe that to more, Notice how the CPU looks completely different. That's because the CPU is in seconds. So if I just do the straight CPU the way I did here, it's going to give me that raw data. All right, I don't care about that. That's still giving me what I want. By using that select object, I was able to select just the properties that I wanted. Now I can also select properties that are not normally displayed. So let's do, let's go to get service for this one. Get service, remember, is going to show us by default three properties, the status, the name, the display name. All right, if I want to view more than that, I can do get service, pipe it to get member. And now I can look for any of these properties. So let's say I want to see the startup type. So I can do this. I can do get service. I can pipe that to select object, and I want to see the display name first. So display name, by the way, this is not case sensitive, but I'll show you why I'm doing this in a uh, formal case in a minute. So display name, I wanted the status, and then I want whether it can pause and continue. No, I wanted the startup type, that's what it was. So I'm going to do start type and filter that to more. Okay, so now it's going to give me the display name, the status, and the startup type. Remember, this was not something that displayed at first. It's something I specifically said, hey, I want to see using select object. Now, I also want you to see if you look at the layout of this table and compare that to the layout of our default table, notice it looks quite a bit different. That's because PowerShell has a default formatting for service objects, and that's what gets displayed here. But once I pipe it to select object, it's no longer technically a service object. Now it's a generic type of object, and PowerShell doesn't have a default formatting for that, so it just takes a jolly good shot at it and hopes that it gets it right. We'll talk later about ways that we can control the format of this output. Now, remember I said that we don't care about case. These are not case sensitive. So let me come back here. I'm going to change display name to all lowercase. And hit enter. All right. Notice it goes ahead and pulls it anyway. It's not case sensitive. In some instances, in some versions of PowerShell, if you do that with the uh, lowercase, it will actually display up here in lowercase. Now, you can also choose a property that doesn't exist. Let's choose a property of CPU, which is not a property that is associated with a service. 
So if you do that, it will go ahead and try, but you notice here under CPU we have the header, but we have no data. So if you try to pull or select an object or select a property that doesn't exist, PowerShell just is going to ignore that. It will go ahead and run the command. You just won't get that particular that particular column. All right, now there's something else that I want to show you with select object. So let's go back to our processes here. So I'm going to do get process and I'm going to pipe that to more. Now I want the top, let's say five processes that have used the most of my CPU time. So what I can do is I can do get process and now remember we sort using the sort object. So I'm going to do sort object and I'm going to sort by CPU in descending order. Now I'm going to pipe that to more and we're going to see here all of our processes sorted by CPU use in descending order. Now notice that wasn't what I wanted, right? I said I wanted the top five. Well, I can identify the top five here for me, but I could also have PowerShell pull the top five. But I want to see you to see what I did here. I didn't try to do the entire command all at once. I'm doing it a little piece at a time. Get process, then let me sort, make sure my sort works. Now we'll worry about selecting. So anytime you're building PowerShell commands, especially if there's going to be multiple components there, do it one piece at a time. Use your up arrow to go back to the previous command. Once it works, hit your up arrow, and then add on the next portion of it. So I want to select object, if I can spell object, and I want to specify the first five. Now, I don't have to pipe that to more, but whatever. It's force of habit by this point. Now the select object, remember we used select object and we did the property thing before to select specific properties that we want to see. Now we're using that to select the first five objects. Okay, it's a great tool. You can do first, you can do last, you can do more than five, you can do less than five, whatever. The point is, we're selecting the information that we want to see on our objects. This is still going to be a little bit different than the where object, which is what we'll use, and we haven't talked about where object yet, which we'll use to filter objects. This is just selecting objects. So using select object, we can select specific properties, that we want to display about our objects. Remember, we discover the properties using get member, or we can use it to select the first or the last group of objects. Okay, that's a quick breakdown of how we can use select object in PowerShell.